What's up, Fluffle Gang? Today we're talking about Johnny. Johnny is one of the most confusing characters in Metal Gear Solid. He appears in almost every game throughout the series, despite Metal Gear spanning 50 years. He appears or cameos in more games than Solid Snake. Let's go over Johnny Sasaki's timeline and nail down when and why this character appears throughout the series once and for all. We're going to be going through Johnny's timeline from the beginning to the end, not in release date order of the games, but the timeline in which the games actually occur. 1964, MGS3 and Operation Snake Eater. Actually, my name is Johnny too. Johnny's first appearance in the timeline is way back in 1964 in Operation Snake Eater. Already, things are getting a little complicated since this isn't the Johnny we know and love from Metal Gear Solid 1, but Johnny's grandpa. You see, all the sons in Johnny's family are named Johnny, so that's where all the confusion comes from. We'll be calling MGS3's Johnny, Grandpa Johnny, to differentiate. Grandpa Johnny is a Russian crew soldier serving under Volgan, and you can tell him apart from his fellow soldiers by the J sewn into the forehead of his balaclava and his armband. Why does Grandpa Johnny get to have the first letter of his name sewn into his clothes while his fellow soldiers are forced to remain nameless? How cute would it have been if all the soldiers had the first letter of their name on their forehead? Actually, don't do that. I already can't handle them dying. If they had the first letter sewn onto their clothes, I would cry every time they died. During Operation Snake Eater, Grandpa Johnny guards Naked Snake's cell after he's been tortured by Volgan, much like Grandson Johnny will guard Snape's cell in the future after he's been tortured by Ocelot. Grandpa Johnny is sweet and offers Snake food while he's there captive, and when Snake offers the food back to Grandpa Johnny, he opens up about his family. It's here that we learn that Grandpa Johnny had lived sometime in the US and has a wife and son named Johnny, and that his son's son will also probably be named Johnny. I don't know why Grandpa Johnny left his family to go back to the Soviet Union, maybe to visit other family, but it's sad that he's separated from them. He mentions he's really lonely, and that's just so sad. After talking with Naked Snake a bit, he offers Snake back his cigarette-shaped gas spray gun, thinking it was just a regular cigarette case. Despite his goodwill and giving Snake food and his cigarettes back, Grandpa Johnny refuses to just let Snake go and warns him that if he tries to escape, he'll have to kill him. There are a few ways you can deal with Grandpa Johnny, from using the cigarette spray on him, to giving him rotten food to irritate his stomach and send him rushing for the bathroom. Like his grandson, you can also fool him into thinking you're dead by using the fake death pill and he'll open the cell door. 2005, MGS-1 and the Shadow Moses Incident. Oh my stomach! Oh, damn it! Mm. In Metal Gear Solid, we get to know Grandpa Johnny's grandson, Johnny. Johnny is a genome soldier and takes part in Liquid Snake's revolt during the Shadow Moses incident. He guards Merrill's and the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, Sagan's set of cells. While Snake is talking with Donald Anderson, Merrill starts banging on her cell door, which prompts Johnny to open it. Merrill swiftly knocks Johnny out and steals his clothes to disguise herself, leaving him unconscious on the floor as she opens the door to the DARPA chief's cell. Merrill's beatdown was the moment Johnny fell in love with her. We'll talk more about that next when we get to Johnny's appearance in Metal Gear Solid 4. After Johnny comes to and recovers a spare change of clothes, he's assigned to guard Snave's cell after he's been tortured by Revolver Ocelot. You'd think that after his failure to guard the DARPA chief that they might not assign him to another high-profile captive, but Ocelot was so loopy from losing his arm by that point that maybe he forgot about Johnny's failings. While guarding Snavid, Johnny complains about catching a cold after being left unconscious and naked in the cold Alaskan base. He's taking medicine for his cold, but it just can't seem to slice through it. Poor Johnny. His irritable bowel syndrome is acting up too, and he needs to take frequent bathroom breaks due to his diarrhea. Like Grandpa Johnny, there are multiple ways to deal with Johnny to get out of the cell. You can fool him by faking your own death, by lying in a puddle of ketchup, or by hiding under the bed when he isn't looking. Maybe gullibility runs in the family? Johnny survives the Shadow Moses incident, amazingly. 2009, the Big Shell incident. Oh no, my stomach! Not again! Most of the other Genome soldiers that participated in Liquid's Revolt were detained at Peace AFB, a historic seaport in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Nastasha implies in her book, In the Darkness of Shadow Moses, The Unofficial Truth, the Genome soldiers were held there to be further experimented on by the Patriots. Before, they were experimented on by having their genes slash nucleotides rearranged to mirror big bosses. Having escaped detainment, Johnny went on to join the Gerlukovich mercenaries. The Gerlukovich mercenaries were formed by Group Colonel Sergei Gerlukovich after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Their goal was to restore Russia to its former glory as a superpower and it brought together Soviet soldiers who were unemployed after the reorganization of the Red Army and had nowhere else to go. I don't know why Johnny would join a Russian mercenary group, though I guess he has Russian ties through his grandpa? Maybe it was the only way to escape detainment. As the Galukovich mercenaries were involved in the Big Shell incident, Johnny was deployed right along with them. There are two times you can find Johnny. The first is when you're supposed to be listening in on a conversation between Olga and Solidus, but if you aim your directional mic to the left, you can catch Johnny monologuing to himself in the bathroom. Johnny reflects on how much Olga reminds him of Merrill, how he was cruising on the elite course before things hit the skids in Shadow Moses, that the Russian crew was a decent bunch, and how the president's escort guys annoyed him and that he just needed to hang in there. Although complainy, it's cute how Johnny pumps himself up to deal with tough situations. The second encounter is one Johnny has with Emma Emmerich. You can listen in on the encounter with your directional mic while EE is pressing the strut L oil fence. 
Moses. Johnny lowers his gun since she's just an unarmed woman and lets her go. He comments that he's learned from Shadow Moses not to associate with pretty women since it leads to a bout of diarrhea. Maybe Johnny's IBS is connected to stress and he stresses out every time he needs to interact with someone he finds pretty? That's really cute, Johnny. He tries to hide his name from E.E., -E, either to be a cool, nameless hero or maybe not to get in trouble if E.E. -E is captured and interrogated but eventually gives it up, and E.E. heads on her way after remarking that Johnny is a weird guy. It's too bad we don't actually get to see Johnny, but Metal Gear Solid 4 more than makes up for it as we get a whole subplot involving Johnny. 2014, Guns at the Patriots Incident. <laughs> MGS4 is the first game that really thrusts Johnny into the spotlight. MGS4 is really where Johnny's given the opportunity to shine. After the Big Shell incident, Johnny returns to the US military and joined Merrill's Rat Patrol Team 01. He's introduced by the nickname Akiba because he loves Tokyo's world-famous Akihabara Electronics District. When Johnny had time to go to Tokyo so often that he earned the nickname Akiba is beyond me. Maybe he just saw Akihabara's Electronics District in magazines or online or something and became obsessed with it that way. Johnny is described as being covered in electronics by the Metal Gear Solid for online database, but I honestly didn't notice him as being any more covered in electronics than anyone else. Snape has his solid eye that he uses to block out one of his eyes because the technical advantages it gives him is greater than what his naked eye offers. His entire sneaking suit is outfitted with the technical ability to make his muscles work more efficiently and keep his aging body from breaking down on the battlefield. Akiba having a little keyboard to type on or something like that didn't really faze me. I feel like this is, in part at least, supposed to explain why he's covered in electronics, but we honestly see so little of that focused on that. Him being called Akiba was just weird to me and a little out of left field. Johnny is one of the few American soldiers not beholden to the Sons of the Patriot system. He hates shots. I'm right there with him. So he's been dodging nanomachine ejections, probably even way back in MGS1. He catches a cold despite the genome soldiers having been outfitted with a peptide to save off the cold. As the Sons of the Patriot system is meant to connect soldiers so that they can work more efficiently as a team, Johnny uses his computers to try and manually log into the system. This creates a delay though and he's always just a little out of step with the rest of the rat patrol. Okay. I do love that the plot in MGS4 bends over backwards to explain why Johnny doesn't have nanos and also how that still works for him despite everyone else operating with nanos. Johnny's the opposite of Senator Armstrong. No nanomachines, son. During a scouting mission for Merrill's Rat Patrol, Johnny is discovered by a Middle Eastern militia soldier when his IBS acts up and his farting attracts the attention of the militia soldier, despite his being hidden in a barrel at the time. Luckily, Johnny gets away, though he scampers off with his pants half down. Later, when Johnny and Snavid come face to face after so many years, he doesn't recognize him at first. Johnny holds Snavit up with his gun, but Snavit's able to trick Johnny into thinking that he accidentally left the safety on, and when Johnny takes his eyes off of Snavit to check the safety of his gun, Snavit CQCs and disarms him. Johnny is so silly. Despite being a 10-year vet, he's such a goof. He doesn't remember whether or not he has the safety on his gun. Johnny. Johnny's incompetence knows no bounds as he attracts a battalion of frogs with a reflection off of his binoculars and then poops his pants in the ensuing battle between the frogs and the rat patrol and Snavid. After Liquid Ocelot shuts out the sons of the Patriot system, Johnny's the only soldier unaffected by the adverse effects and good thing too since he's able to drag Snavid off to safety. The second time Liquid shuts off SOP, Meryl ends up knocked into a river and Johnny's able to save her removing his balaclava for the first time in the series and reviewing flowing golden locks of hair as he performs CPR and Meryl to save her. Why is Johnny such a pretty boy? Meryl kisses Johnny in her relief, and this is probably the first time she thinks of him romantically. However, Johnny's loved Meryl since the events of MGS1. Later in MGS4, when Johnny is confronted by Screaming Mantis, he's also unable to fall under the control of her Psycho Mantis doll, as he doesn't have nanomachines for her to control him with. After Snavid defeats Screaming Mantis, he leaves Johnny and Meryl to hold off the frogs as he moves on to go through his microwave hallway and take down the Patriot AIs. It's during this heated battle that Johnny confesses his love to Meryl, having loved her since way back in MGS1 where she beat him up and stole his clothes. Johnny proposes to Meryl, though she rejects his first proposal and tells him she wants to do things her way, and then she proposes to him and he accepts. The whole scene is so silly and goofy and really captures Johnny's silly, goofy character. It was originally planned, based on concept art, that Grandpa Johnny was going to be at their wedding. The idea was later scrapped, but how cute would that have been? I don't know why Johnny got such a huge role in MGS4 or why they made him so pretty, but I'm not complaining. I love Johnny as a character and found so much relief in his small comedic bits thrown into the soup of sadness that is MGS4. I wasn't lying when I said Johnny has appeared or cameoed in more MGS games than Solid Snake. We know about his appearances in MGS1 as a genome soldier, in MGS2 he has a couple of voice cameos, and in MGS3 his grandpa makes an appearance, but did you know he's also referenced in Portable Ops Plus, Peace Walker, Ground Zeroes, and The Phantom Pain? In Portable Ops Plus, Grandpa Johnny is recruitable as a random prisoner in the Infinity Missions. In Peace Walker, when checking soldier profiles, they have the potential to say, oh my stomach, 
Or, I got a bunny named Johnny. Soldiers can also have a likeness to Johnny in their character portraits. In Ground Zeroes, you can hear groans coming from a porta potty and the extra ops deja vu, and Cos will tell you to leave him alone and will wonder if the soldier with bowel problems was Johnny before dismissing the thought. Someone's in the outhouse. Some soldier with stomach trouble? I think he's gonna be a while. I will leave him alone. In the Phantom Pin, you can pick up a cassette tape labeled Occupied that you can use while hiding in a porta potty to cancel an alert. Johnny is a shockingly recurrent character. Without his incompetence, we would have seen the end of Naked Snake and Solid Snake as a more competent guard wouldn't have let them escape from their cells and would have had nanomachines and couldn't have saved Snavid when all of the SOP was going down and causing havoc with the soldiers that did have nanos. So we owe a lot to Johnny. And that's everything we have on Johnny. Thank you so, so much for making it to the end of the video. Thank you, Whiskey Corridor, for suggesting this topic in Discord. Join us in Discord if you want to suggest a video topic for a future video. Please like, subscribe, bell, hit the bell. More importantly, please, please take care of yourselves. And thank you.